Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 17 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the countermeasures set control panel, the CMSC, and we're also going to look at some of the key enunciator lights. We're going to look at the design and build of these and we're then going to integrate them into the front dash frame and we'll run some tests as we bring them online. Let's buckle up. So first look at the CMSC panel. It's not the most complex of panels. One of the key considerations is the display or displays to use. It's either going to be three small displays or just one large one behind the, that fascia of that panel. And then we've got five momentary push buttons. And then we've got two inputs, um, be rotary encoder for brightness and audio control. And there are three small indicator lights, and I use uh, three millimetre LEDs for those. In thinking a little bit more about the display or displays I would use, my first thoughts are to use three OLEDs, three small OLEDs, the same type that I use for the UHF repeater. I'd ideally want the three of them run from just one Arduino, so I would need to look at some form of multiplexer which we can see here now uh, to drive them all. The OLED for the UHF repeater did work well it had a, a good effect to it and it looked the part and my thoughts moved to rather than using three of these why not just use one single larger OLED. So I'd had this single larger OLED which I'd picked up from eBay quite some time ago and at this point my thoughts are to use this and for the momentary push buttons that we can see the five of them to use in the same style that we use for the multifunction color displays that being a 3d printed cap which is painted and engraved that clicks onto a, a illuminated tactile switch So that was my initial plan and I did some designs around that, however I then came across this display which is a 20 by 2 vacuum filled display which I was testing for the countermeasures panel on the right console and I really was impressed with the quality of this display to the point I was thinking I want this in the CMSC panel in the front dash. So we'll just take a look at that display in some of the tests that I undertook. Just give an idea of the effect and you can compare that to the image in the top left of the screen from the sim. So I'm not sure if that camera shot really does the display justice but I have to say it does look absolutely great. So absolutely this is the one I want to get into that, into that panel and it will involve some redesign because it is quite a large footprint to that relative to the size of the panel. Well, you can see on screen my redesigned CAD drawing, which moves things around to allow it to accommodate that vacuum filled display. If we look at the top image, which is the CMSC from the sim, we can see that for the display to go in place as just one unit, it does push down the three momentary push buttons of PRI, SEP and UNK to a lower position. It also leaves a lot less space for these buttons themselves and the original illuminated tactile switches I were going to use would no longer fit into that space. So I've decided to use the same style that I use for the nav panel. So we can see one here in a test fit just to the left of the vacuum filled display and that will be used for all five of those momentary style push buttons. And here's some tests I've run in labeling them so that's the plan uh, it might be at some point in the future i revisit this panel and, and change these momentary push buttons but they've worked well in the nav panel and it will allow me at this point to incorporate the vacuum filled display as with many of the other panels i've done 
Where possible, the inputs will be via keyboard encoder. We can therefore see a split for this panel. The one part will go via keyboard encoder, which will be for the audio control knob and several of the momentary push buttons and everything else, including the display, will be by DCS BIOS. I found that this approach works well and there have been times that I've had a function that wouldn't exist within DCS BIOS but there's a keyboard binding that you can allocate to it for the encoder. Uh, but equally I've had times where there's no bindings for something like say the KY58 panel um, but actually you can allocate things to it via DCS BIOS. The components that will be interfaced via DCS BIOS will be through the IRQ serial hub that we'd show the build of that as part of some of the recent videos in this series. And that hub, as well as running this panel, will run other ones such as the digital clock. So in this test, I'm just checking, and I'm, I'm, you can see I'm booting it up here, that, that it will run on I2C, the digital clock, as well as separately this vacuum fill displays via its other pin designations. I have found times previously where two components for separate panels may run just fine uh, individually, but when you combine them and run them on the one Arduino together, they might not want to work together, so important to iron all of this out at this point. For the indicator lights within this panel, it'll be the first time I'll have gone to a smaller size 3mm LED, whereas all previous ones have been 5mm. And I'll just run some tests now just to just to be clear that they're all working, but also to decide on the resistor value so it's of the right brightness. As shown in the design picture, 560 ohms the one I've settled on here. And if we go ahead and activate that now, we can see the brightness will be just about right. This one large display as it sits behind the fascia of this panel um, will need to sit in such a way that it divides into those different segments of information. As via the process shown in previous videos, we go ahead and produce a fascia, and then we can test mount the vacuum fill display behind that. Something that was on my mind was the knobs that would be used, and these ones were of about the right size. I'd picked up a whole batch of these really cheap online. The only concern I had is they so shiny, they look like almost like hi-fi knobs. So I've took these and I've made a modification to them to reduce the height of them, but also give them more of a matte military finish. And if we take a look at that now, I definitely think that is a much better finish and well worth the time needed to adapt it. So I can take out the display and start building at the back of the panel. Initially, a bit of a mess of wires as we solder everything in place, which we can later tidy. Given that there's a mix of different components and a different mix of interface types, on the mounting plate, which will sit at the back, I'll put a bit of a diagram just to show, should I revisit this, need to do any maintenance on it, what wiring goes where. I have found that the designated 12 volt uh, power input for the backlighting of these buttons just leads to it being too bright. It's just brighter than the rest of the backlighting of the front dash. So in this panel, I'm putting in place a voltage regulator just to drop that down to something where the brightness blends in with the rest of the front dash and the rest of the other consoles and panels. Rather than having one power supply for this going in at one voltage, and the whole rest of the SIM pit being at a different voltage, it's easier for this to be supplied at the same 12 volt as all the LED strips elsewhere, but then it's got this regulator in place specifically for this panel. So we're now at the point that this is built, and we'll just take a moment to pan round and have a close look at, at this panel, just prior to its installation. From this to other panels shown in other videos in this series, you see a lot of the build is it's all consistent and that's in terms of the wiring, the standard RJ45 uh, connections used, the colour coding of the wiring, etc. 
The only things that are different is this is the first time I've used this type of display. It's also got a diagram for ease of future maintenance, uh, which is attached to stuck to one of the mounting plates. And it's got the voltage regulator, which is a DC to DC book converter, a, a voltage drop down module just to control the backlighting better. And also that small modification to the knobs, just so they don't look like they're off a hi-fi, they look like they belong on something potentially from an aircraft. So it's time now for us to integrate this into the front dash. Excellent, looking good. The next part is to look at the enunciator lights. I designed and 3D print a holder for it, which is similar in design to the one I use for the uh, wheel position lights on the landing gear panel. I take an initial test print of that and just check that it fits okay. Of the four annunciator windows, each of those four windows will have two LEDs each, just to be sure that it can cascade light what of a great enough width to illuminate all of the text. And here I'm just testing one of them. So what we'll see now is the little window put into place, and then just a, a test. And this represents half of the amount of light that will be cascaded. So we can see by the time the other LEDs in and it will uh, light that up no problem. And I found it's definitely worth spending some time just to play around with the distance from the LED to the engraved in acrylic and also the value of the resistor just to arrive at the point that you've got the right, right look for the illumination. So we'll go ahead now and install the first unit, which contains two of the enunciator lights. Whereas the CMSC panel was interfaced by a mix of keyboard encoder and DCS BIOS over IRQ serial, these indicator lights will all four be driven just by DCS BIOS and that will be over the RS485 PCB network. So this first one's straightforward because it is literally just the holder with the LEDs, a few resistors at the back, and it's just secured in place. The one that we'll install on the right in a moment will also have the additional PCB slave device, um, which can then connect to the network. So as they now sit in place, we'll just run a couple of tests, make sure that they're working as they should. Something that I'd noticed within the sim was that the canopy unlocked indicator is of a different colour to the others. It's more of a yellowy green. So when sourcing the green LEDs for these indicators, I did also pick up some greeny yellow ones. We can see the comparison here, the greeny yellow being on the right. However, the difference in colour is really actually quite marginal. I'm not convinced that will be a big difference noted when it's all lit. So here are all the parts laid out to assemble that final set of indicator lights. And for this particular one we can see there um, the two variations of LED for slightly different colours and the resistors and other bits and pieces to hold everything in place. With that unit assembled there's one other 3D printed item which is attached via screws and nuts to the back. Um, that's just to hold everything in place. So let's just have a look at the completed final unit now. What we can see mirrors exactly what we had on the left of the front dash brow. Um, just the only difference with this one being the slightly different color LEDs for the one window. Again, and I've mentioned this in some of the videos recently, I really would feel lost without my 3D printer now really really great for rapid prototyping and um, designing bespoke parts for particular parts of panels so we can go ahead and put this piece in place 
Brilliant. So these annunciator lights are going to be interfaced via an RS-485 network. So I 3D print and design a mounting bracket which will sit at the back to support the slave PCB. So if we take a look now, now we can see what's going on under the hood. So the slave PCB that we see here drives all four of these indicators. This then connects into the PCB RS-485 network and if we just pan around to look at that now, I've now connected on the right, as you can see there, the additional breakout board which extends the number of slaves we can connect and I've just connected this to the rear of that. Right, with everything in place, we're now at the point that we can be bringing them fully online and running some initial tests. So here we are purposely flying into an area with lots of surface-to-air missiles. When the red lights flash in, ideally be someplace else. But in these tests, absolutely great to have this addition to the sim pit. It'd have that red light literally flashing in your face to warn you. Brilliant. And all the other buttons are behaving as they should. All looks to be working fine. Right, we can visually make out the launch on the top left there. Inbound. Right then, let's run some other tests. So we'll trigger some of the enunciator lights. And let's have a look at the canopy unlock light. Now the camera has perhaps not made this out the best, but it is a slightly different shade to the others, although it's not anywhere near as notable or dramatic as what's in the sim. So that'll work just fine. Um, if I do do some maintenance on any of these indicator lights in the future, at that point I might just pop in uh, an LED that's more yellow. There's definitely a good feel to the actuation of these type of push buttons. Nice, good clicky feel. I'd recently saw some hex-headed black screws recently. You've got some here just holding this display in place. And I do think they add a, a nice touch to some of the panels too. So we're at the end of the testing now. And everything seems to be working as it should. I found there was quite a few learnings I gained from making this panel and obviously really handy to discover and come across this type of display. For anyone interested, it's a, it's a clone that I bought from AliExpress and it's based on the Adafruit vacuum fill display 20x2, which I don't believe they manufacture anymore. But if you start by having a look at a Google search for the Adafruit one and then uh, pick up the clone from AliExpress, but yeah, works really well. Very straightforward to connect an interface. Uh, it's quite limited in the number of pins. I have run mine on a external 5 volt source just so it doesn't draw too much from the Arduino. So there's uh, another couple of welcome additions to the SIM pit. I'll now turn my attention to the front dash fuel panel and hope to share that soon. Thanks for watching.